<laughs> what does he say? No, I think you don't understand proper grammatical English. And I'm from Switzerland. Excuse me. Did you read it wrong, right? No, you asked me. I'm asking a question. You don't be disingenuous with me. Because you seem to not understand. Don't, don't, if you are disingenuous, I'll just walk away because I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah, go ahead. She asks Jesus yeah. to help her because her daughter is basically, she says, is bewitched, right? Yeah. Okay, she says, uh, and he answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah. I've not come for these people. Then he qualifies the statement. Now, we don't believe in Islam that Jesus would have ever spoken like this. Yeah. We don't believe that. Yeah, go ahead. But the Bible does because the Bible says this. Then he says, the woman came and knelt before him. Uh, Lord, Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread. In other words, the, the, in, the, other words. in other words, the nourishment for the children, the blessings for the children and toss it to the dog. So he's basically referring to her as a dog. Okay. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. So the point here is, when you said to me, that Jesus has never made a mistake. We believe that the prophets, none of the prophets sinned. That's what we believe. Yeah. The Bible actually believes something very different because it says Lot, Lot had incest with his daughters. We don't believe Lot, prophet yeah, Lot ever that. did this. We don't believe this. But the Jewish believe in the Christian. Doesn't matter, but we don't mm. believe this about the prophets. Yeah. We hold the prophets as the, as the best of examples to humanity. But you know, this is we, a bidder, we, you know that. No, no, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> we hold the prophets to the highest standards. We don't accuse them of committing incest. We don't accuse them of, of calling people dogs. We don't say that Jesus said to his mother, woman, woman. We don't believe he spoke to her yeah. in this way. You're entitled to that, okay. obviously. But the Bible says he did. Yes. So this is why we say that these scriptures are corrupted uh. because they've interpolated and they've added and they've corrupted even the character of the prophets of Allah. There's a problem with that. Again, I need to say that to you and I think we need to sit down so and your, we give each other references. So your initial, in the, in your the, initial argument was that it is widely agreed by the scholars that Muhammad committed sins. And smaller I, and, and sins. I can, no, 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 sins no, I said. no, okay. I need to call it. Nobody says sins. Uh -huh. There is not one sin of Prophet wasallam that is mentioned that this was a sin that the Prophet did. Not one. They were, the Prophets were held to a much higher standard than you or me. So once a blind person came yeah. and he interrupted a conversation of the Prophet wasallam, and there was a just slight frown, slight frown, and this was enough for Allah to rebuke the Prophet in the Quran mm. that he cannot do this, yeah. right? But this is not a sin. This is not a sin. At according all. According to Judaism at and all. Christianity, yes. Well, according to Judaism and Christianity, I don't care what they think about the Quran or what they think about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. I, I care about what Allah has said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I care about that authority. For us, that is the authority. The authority is not the Christian or the Jew whose scriptures are changed. Yeah. If you don't have a scripture that is preserved by God Almighty, and then you use it as the criteria to measure Islam, which has a scripture that has been preserved. Yeah. I cannot respect that. I can. I need to be quoted to, to to six at Victoria. My apologies, but I can ask you this question. Can I ask you this question? Just on top of your head, within the Salah, with the in the within the Salah, within the area of the Salaf al Salih, in the third three generations. Yes. Can you name me any scholar <laughs> who stated that the that the scriptures, the scholars. And if you don't know, ask those who know. Mm. By the way, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Christian, but I started comparative religion. Right. Under Professor Kuri in Germany. He's okay. a famous Maronite professor. But can you tell me any scholar within the generation of the Salaf al Salihin? Do you speak any Arabic? No, I don't speak Arabic. Now they use the term, I also don't speak Arabic and not reading, but they use the term Karni. Karni, it's the technical term. It means generation. Within the three generations, can you name any scholar who, who stated that the scriptures of the Jews and the Christian are corrupted? Uh, I don't need the scholars. Huh? I don't need the scholars. Because Muslims initially didn't believe in no, that. No, 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 no. It is a bidda invented hold, hold, later. Hold on a second, hold on a second. And the, I can the, prove that. The, the Quran itself states 
the Quran itself says that they change the scriptures with their own hands. Woe to them. No, that's not woe the way. To, woe to Sorry, them. That's not the way. Listen, yeah. there are two things here, very important. Very, very important. It's the scholars who interpret the Quran. One, one, brother, one second. And not a lay person. Brother, one second. Just, there, Ask there are two or know. three. There are two or three very important points here. Yeah. Number one, the oldest complete manuscripts that we have are, are the uh, Codex Sinaiticus, 300 and fourth century, hmm? fourth century, right? Of the, the Christian Bible, the, the complete, most complete Bible that we have, the most is, complete. is fourth century, right? Yeah, is complete in the. British Library here, yeah. Codex, Codex Sinaiticus, right? Yeah. Before that, what we have is we have manuscripts that are separated all over uh, for yeah. the third century, fourth century, fifth yeah, century, sixth, right? Second century. Even the Christians themselves didn't know which was what was the word of God. So to, to sort of now assume that the Muslims must have thought that they have the complete word of God is ludicrous. <laughs> Why would because if the, because if the Jews look if the Jews and the Christians themselves knew that we don't have the preserved word of God how do you expect the Arabs to think that they had the preserved word of God it doesn't even make sense if the very That's people the reason why they burned all the Quran if, if the very it? if the very people who follow those religions accept that they don't have the pres mm. preserved text why would you expect somebody outside of their religion to think that they did mm. it doesn't even make sense. So Allah has specified very clearly. Now, the beautiful thing is mm. that when Allah says they changed it with their hands and woe to them for what they changed and woe to them for what mm. they earned. Yes, we see the evidence of it today. We have the evidence. Now, I'm asking you, a person who studied comparative religion. I'm not, just, I don't call myself a scholar. Well, you studied comparative yeah. religion. What stops you from accepting Islam? Sheikh Mohammed asked me that last week. What stops you? Tell me. There could be so many things. What, what stops you? Because I'll tell you something now. I'm always late. I will tell you something now, brother. If I'm you not your brother, it, technically speaking. Well, you in, are, in, you're, in you're, Adam, you are, listen, if you, been, if you, by the way, I agree a lot of things with Islam teachers right. in their, in when their, I say brother, in, their Akira, in Islam, in, in, their, in Islam, we believe, in the halal and haram, okay. I agree with a lot of things. You're from, but you're from Switzerland, right? Huh? You're yeah, from I'm Swiss German, what's your half English. What's your ethnic, ethnic origin? English, half English? Half English and half Swiss German. And half Swiss German. Look, when I say brother to you, we believe that we are all brothers in humanity. Brothers and sisters in humanity. Well, I used to believe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, there is, a, there is a brotherhood of religion, but there is also a brotherhood of humanity. You know, I One used to be in this brotherhood of religion. I used to be a disciple of a man called Sri Ramakrishna. Right. Who was an Indian saint. I understand, I know. He lived from 1836 yes. to 1886. And he said, as all rivers leading to the one ocean, mm. so all religions leading to the one God. Yeah. And I converted mm. on a mystical level to all religion. Yes. And to a certain degree, I studied with all the different religions. For instance, I studied with uh, with the Sheikh Abdul Qayyum, the Imam of uh, of East London Mosque. Yes. I studied with Sheikh Al Dars. He was a famous Arab scholar in Regent Park Mosque. But this was only on a mystical level, because on a practical level, you cannot you do see, that really. The, this this notion it, it doesn't lead to to anything. You this, know this notion that, that every religion is true because yes. they contradict each other and yes. they cannot That's be right. equally true. That's right. Some people believe that you know uh, we are all gods. Other people say no, God is different from humans. So I realized that. And since 14 years, basically, I don't believe in anything except la ilaha illallah. So you but, but in the in the biblical sense, because in the in the book of Daniel there is this word ilaha, and it's an Aramaic word. Now the the, the, the teaching of la ilaha illallah is brilliant if you understand it correctly. Actually, everybody believes in la ilaha illallah, even those so-called atheists. So you believe they create it, so their you, own ilaha. So you believe you, know, you believe Karl in Marx or Allah You believe in la ilaha illallah. What stops you from accepting Muhammadur Rasulullah? What is stopping you for that? That's why I want to know. The Masiya, the sin. What sin? His behavior. What behavior? First of all. You say Muhammad was. You believe 
the Muslim, the Sunni Muslim belief, and I'm talking here only about Sunni Muslim because Shia Muslim is a little bit slightly different. The Sunni Muslim belief that, actually I wanted to do this later, but we Sheikh Mohammed, but anyway, you believe that there's of a lineage of prophets, yeah, that God gave Wahi to people, you know, to, to Nabis, revelation, yes. and so forth, revelation. Uh, I don't believe that today any longer, but, uh, and so you claim in the Quran, there is a list of prophets, around 25 names, and they come in a lineage. Do you agree that Jesus, before Mohammed, the last prophet on earth, What's Isa? Yes, of course. Okay, that's Alayhi fixed. Alayhi salam. That's important because you need to fix things. So you rely on that, on that particular stream, yes? Isa, and before Isa, who was the prophet there? Well, we don't rely on that stream. Look, brother, the point... No, 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 you the, cannot the, say just, for instance, uh, during Jesus' time, look, but I'm asking you. There were other prophets in other. I, I understand. Other pro claim to be prophets I, in other I, areas I, of the I, world. I understand. What but I'm, you reject that. No, no, but because, because Jesus was the last prophet, look, according. Look, to look, the thing, the thing here is this. I'm asking you. Yeah. <coughs> excuse me. I'm asking you. What stops you from accepting the second part of the Shahada, which is Muhammadur Rasulullah? That's what I'm asking you. Yeah, because it's false. Okay, why? Muhammad is not a Rasulullah. So you don't believe he's a prophet? No. No. No, I, I would say this, depending on what I believe, you know, I believe that there was, first of all, there are different theories out there. Some people say there wasn't a Muhammad. Brother, okay. I'm asking you, do you believe I'm that the Prophet Muhammad is, was a prophet of messenger of God or not? Not in the sense the Muslim belief, no. Okay. So what do you believe that he was then? Huh? What do you believe he was? If there was a man called Muhammad Abdul, Ibn Abdullah, yeah, in Arabia in that time, I believe he was either a Jewish or a Christian reformer. That's okay. what I believe. So do you believe that the Quran is the work of a, a man who was basically lying to the people? The Quran is a mixture of many things. If I would believe in la ila illala, uh, I don't want to go there, not here, because I may be come to, look, look, you may be offended. No, I don't, I don't get offended by anything. Look, the bottom line is this. We have a revelation. You believe that, yeah. We believe that. We believe that there are uh, established evidences that support the claim. So, for example, in the Quran, we find prophecies that came true. Yeah. We find prophecies in the Hadith that came true. Many of the prophecies were counter. Uh, um, they were counter to what? Counterintuitive. In other words, what you would expect to happen, the prophecy was the exact opposite and the prophecy came true. Now, a man who is a liar will make lots of prophecies. Many of them will not come true. That's the sign of a liar, right? Or they're self-fulfilling. Okay, or self-fulfilling, right? But Alhamdulillah, we have now a Quran. We have the Sana manuscripts. We have the earliest Quran, some which are carbon dated. Uh, 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 carbon, Where are the carbon manuscripts? Ca carbon, uh, they're in different museums spread all over the world. So the Sana, one of the Sana uh, manuscripts, uh, the, what, the one that was found recently was in the Birmingham University that they found it. And they carbon dated it at the time around, it could be around the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, I studied with the scholar, now, now the point you know, I studied with the scholar Gerd Putin who discovered this and examined well, that's that. That's amazing, actually. okay, that's amazing. He's in Zabrukan. Right. The problem is what you say is not true. Now the point is, well, it is an ancient manuscript, look, but there's a big problem with this. Look, son I mean, what I can say, may I, may I, may I wait for the PhD thesis of uh, Joseph Smith and I'm not with them. Jay okay? Smith. Jay, Jay Smith. Smith. Yeah, I'm not with them. I criticize him because he teaches some very strange things. But he has a friend, I forgot his name, the Saudi guy. Uh, okay, and Shadi. Shadi. Okay. Uh, he does his PhD okay. on look, the Sana manuscript. Let me just explain something to you. Yeah. I don't call many people here liars. Yeah. I'm very reluctant to use that word. Jay Smith has been caught red handed lying and admitted admitted on camera that yes he does lie which give me one example uh, so he i can he, look it up uh, so if you go onto youtube yeah and you search jay smith 
tells his flock, he's telling the people that you base doesn't matter what you say, just say it with confidence, just say it with vigor. In other words, whether it's true or not is irrelevant. No, I to always describe to, to him as a people, right? snake oil seller. Yes, a snake he's, oil he's, seller. he's a snake oil salesman. So you quoting me, Jay Smith, and wait for his thesis, it, it would be like for me... Not his thesis, his friend's thesis. Even his friend's thesis would be like for me to look, pick up a comic book and try to sort of, uh, you know, find out what no, is fact is or fiction. Look, let me explain something to you. There are certain things as a human being when we... Uh, when we look at and we apply our reason, then we can come to some sort of a reasonable explanation. When we study the Quran and we look at it in detail, it is completely contrary to, I would say, logical reason to assume that Muhammad وسلم, was the author. When we look at the evidences, now I've mentioned this person many times before, for example, one evidence, yes? Professor Raymond Farin, who was a non-Muslim, yeah. who studied the text of the Quran, yeah. and he looked at the, the, the way that the Quran was constructed, and he looked at principles of patterns within the text. So he found things like parallel, parallelism, chiism, and concentrism, concentric patterns. What does that mean? So most common one is concentrism, which is basically when you have a particular chapter, there are certain things that are at the beginning that are very much related to the end. And the pattern follows this very circular, uh, for circular, which is called concentrism, right? Sometimes you find the patterns within the patterns. Yeah. He was so impressed at the complexity yeah, okay, no of problem. what he found. He said this was beyond the human understanding, no. beyond human comprehension, human ability. And as a consequence, he accepted Islam. Nobody gave dawah to him. Now, I'm, uh, what I'm asking you is this very simple thing. I asked you, you've accepted La ilaha illallah. <laughs> there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Why do you not accept all of his messengers, including the last messenger? That's my question to you. Well, I personally don't believe in prophets at this present moment in time right. in Nabis. My source of knowledge is the senses and the akal. Going back what you just said. Can the senses be wrong? Huh? Can the senses be wrong? Yes. So is I it, don't claim so, that. So you, if you believe but in the multitude of counsel, there's wisdom. So if you so says. if you believe that there is a God. My Ummah will not agree on an error. Brother, so, do you, do you, there you, is you, multitude you, of counsel. You, I'm, you, I'm on my you, own, you, you believe but that not the, the multitude. You believe that there's a creator? Huh? You believe there's a creator? There's a cause, yeah. You said La ilaha illallah, right? There is La no ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha in Ara Aramaic technical meaning. It can mean God, right. power, right. energy. Do you believe in God? Huh? A supreme supernatural being. Yes. Do you believe in God? It's a simple question. I mean, I don't know why you're so confused by it. <laughs> why, why are you finding that so difficult to answer? Yes because or no? Because God is uh, Allah do you is a mystery. Believe in it's a, a mystery. Do you believe in it a, a do, you, do you believe the in a The nature of this mystery, I do, you do believe not comprehend. In, do you believe in a creator that created everything? I believe that this was caused. Do you believe that it was caused by a conscious by a power, a pa Ilaha, I call a, this power. And did this power have consciousness? What is conscience? In other words, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not material. Can, I, can, I, not, can we go back to this? No, to no, the, no, 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 no. We to have the to, prophet. No, no, we have to. To first, the Quran. No, no, no. We we're switching here from one. If, if you don't even believe in God, if you don't even believe in a creator, what's the point of me talking to you about the prophets? You see, that's what I said to Sheikh Muhammad. The next time we meet to... We you need, need to, you need we need to, to first, record that you because need, we you need, need to get the you, fundamentals, you, right, the usul. Right, the right. Do you believe in a creator of the heavens and the earth? It's a simple question. Albert Einstein said, tell me what is God and I'll tell you if I believe in God. Do you believe in a creator? We, you, you know the notion of a creator within Islam. I believe in an energy and a power. Okay, and does the energy have consciousness? Is it conscious? Does it have a will? In the Torah we read, I am that I am. I'm asking you, does the con sure. does this does this power have a will? Yes, I believe in that. It has a will. 
I believe in. Let's let's make it short. Yeah, I believe it in has God. the capacity to bring into existence what it wishes to. Yeah, I agree. And when it wishes to, I agree with that. And it is all powerful. Now, can I say something uh, here? Hold on. Can I say something? <coughs> Sri Ramakrishna, they believed in two opposition. This guy. I'm not I, talking I, I, about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about you. I'm trying to tell you where I'm coming from. He believed in a personal God, yes. which is called Dwaita in Sanskrit. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? And then he believed in a non-personal God. Do you believe this? Which is called Advaita. But you don't believe this, do you? Not any longer. So let's not talk about what you don't so believe. I believe in. So let's not talk about Dwaita in a personal being. Let, let's not talk about what you don't believe. You believe in a conscious, intelligent all-powerful being uh, that was never created has always existed do you ex accept that yeah. so this is the definition of Allah so you uh, in effect you already believe that there is a supreme creator right but now, the problem now, is now, 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 hold on, hold on. we cannot speak about God in the atheistic world we need hold, to speak hold, in scientific hold, terms hold on a second hold. like energy power people don't understand when they're we, hostile to those words when we say energy power having all energy having all power having a will is conscious it, it wills into existence what it wishes to when it wishes to this is all the definition that we would apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay yeah, but so, you cannot so, tell that. so so in essence what you're saying to me is that you do believe in this type of existence of a creator right yeah but I'm now I'm asking you that mm -hmm. it is but reasonable because you said you like to use your reason the akal, yes. it is it is but reasonable to when you use your akal that this creator that has created you would have created you with a purpose not without purpose because Allah says in the Quran that we created you with purpose mm. okay now how can you find out what that purpose is unless the Creator informs you yeah okay and how can the, the Creator me. how can the Creator inform you in Islam it's called natural revelation so it's called natural that, that, revelation that Allah sent down messengers no who could communicate with the people who could show them by example and who could bring the pure teachings of Allah to those people the you revelation know, in, in the history of, of, of religion you find groups of people they know the concept of God without believing in the concept of a messenger and a prophet they believe that we can know as the Bible teaches that from the created things, the Apostle Paul says, we know that there is a creator. Brother, that brother, is called the fitra bro brother, what, what, Yes, brother, what's your name? Huh? What's your name? Stephen, you Stephen. can call me. Okay, Stephen. Abbas. Yes? Abbas. Abbas. Yeah. Stephen. Forget what people say. Yeah. Forget what people think. Forget what people... No, no, let's go to the Prophet forget. and the Quran. My, my, my to... Brother, my point yeah. to you is a simple one. That if you truly use your akal, Mm. and you believe in this creator then it is but reasonable to expect that the creator has created you with good reasons not just for no reason yeah, I have no problem with that right and when you believe that that is reasonable to believe then one must assume that this loving creator this creator that has given me life given me form and given me the akal that you claim that you have and that I claim that I have mm. okay that the, that he would communicate with me in some way to explain to me my purpose why am I here and what and after my end because an end will reach all of us where am I to go yes and how can I be successful after I die and how can I be successful in this world? Very difficult to be right. successful in this world. Now, now, well, it depends what you define as success. In this delusional world. It, de it depends on what you define as success. For us, success is not to live in Buckingham Palace. Not the flues, huh? Or to buy a Rolls Royce. Not the money. Success in this world is to lead a life where, which is pleased, where Allah is pleased with you and that you meet a good end. This is success. You know, I've never seen people <coughs> which befits the statement of Jesus of Nazareth more than the Muslims when he said, 
you cannot serve God and Mammon together. I lived in the Muslim community in different countries. And in my experience, and I'm not infallible, Muslims, they worship the dunya and God. And that's impossible. I mean, there's Look, no other religion. You don't have monasticism. Look, or this. You, got, you got Zuhud, for instance. You first Stephen, Muslims. Stephen, look. What, they believe brother, you know, in, in, in this. Brother, brother Stephen, <laughs> what some Muslims do yeah, I don't or they don't do. That's one reason why I'm not believing in no, Islam. No, but this is. Now, look, you said you use the your. The behavior of the Muslims. You, you, you said that you use your akal. Yeah. The behavior of a people does not denote necessarily whether what they are on is on truth or on falsehood. The problem is especially, that especially if the trait, yeah, if Muhammad said this especially as well. said this Stephen, as well, yes. especially if the traits that you're talking about, that we are worshiping the world, worshiping wealth. Not this for is, everybody, by the way. I, I know, not I like everybody. To that. I not understand. Everybody, I understand. But in my experience, the but majority. If you, but if you see that. It doesn't mean, therefore, Islam is false. True. It but it's one reason. It, it means that the people, those people that you saw, yeah. are not following Islam. Yeah, but that's one reason. I give no. you one reason why. But if you have no. akal, but no. you, if you use your akal, that should never be a reason to deny, deny or accept anything. For me, it, it is. shouldn't be. Because you know logically that they could still be on the truth but not following it. No, but in my opinion, they, 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 they're following the my, truth of my the point to and you, the Hadith. My point to you is this. You believe La ilaha illallah. Logically and rationally, it makes perfect sense that Allah in His mercy would have sent you guidance, not left you to your own devices. But to I save you, to save you, because Allah says in the Quran that without guidance, you are surely at loss. Yes. In other words, unless you follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, yes. you will divert into areas where you will become a loser. You will lose out. You leave the sirat al mustaqim isn't Right. This? Right. So you need to, Stephen, you seem to know quite a lot. Yeah, I studied a now, lot. Now I'm asking you, what stops you from accepting all of the messengers of God, yes. including the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be What stops you, brother? Forget what people, what you've seen. First of forget all, I these don't believe things. in that. The fundamental reason is obviously I believe in la ilaha illallah, but I do not believe in. I believe in natural reason, in natural why, but I don't believe in supernatural why. And supernatural why means that God chooses certain people and He communicates. His will to them. What, why do, and they're what, called Nabis. In, what, why, in, in why, why, do you, why do you object to that? Because I believe when you look at this, because in, in all religions, basically, <clears throat> the main reason is that you can figure out everything by reason. No, First of all, can I say this to you? Can I say this to you? All knowledge, even the knowledge, the Wahi, and all the rest of the knowledge, all knowledge basically, all knowledge comes through the senses, goes through the senses and through the brain. According to the Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke and he said to, to the, sorry, to the, uh, to the uh, Archangel Jibreel, he said, Ikra, recite. That was the first ayat we received. Ikra. So, Muhammad heard something. It went into this brain and he comprehended. Yes? So, we know that's the proof. There is, that's the proof, by the way, that it goes in here and it goes through here. Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can go or speak, can also speak to his all powerful directly into the brain from inside yes without going hearing an outer voice that's also possible so why for me, why, why do you object to prophets because everything can be known you said no just now so you can we can know through through natural reason it's okay so if we can know by natural reason why are there so many people with hundreds of different thousands of different views different types of work. Some people worshipping rocks, yeah, some, some people worshipping trees, some people worshipping animals, a cow, a monkey, a goat, a snake. Yeah. 
Why is that happening if we can arrive at the truth by just reasoning? Tell me. Because we don't listen to each other's right. arguments. So the reality if is... If they would listen to each other and 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 listen to the... Why, listen, for instance, what the Muslims say about the cow worship, I believe you could can convince the Hindus. Okay, no, but my point to you was simple. Because they, that's the answer. No. We don't listen to each other. Right. Well, if you would listen to each other, we would find a harmony in a way on the essentials. Brother Stephen, isn't it better to listen to Allah? <laughs> rather than listen to Allah. Rather than listening to the we people. We listen to Allah by, for instance, Look, uh, Allah, you, can you, speak you, 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 you. Allah can speak to, through you to me. You know that? By telling me certain truths which I'm not aware of yet and I'm listening to those truths and I say, this is truth what he okay. said. So Stephen, let me ask you a question. So, for instance, Muslims, they go around in Magdawa and they speak about la ila ila la. They communicate in certain scientific facts. For instance, that uh, this universe had a beginning. Somebody didn't know about that. And they communicate that to people. And they accept this truth. But this truth is coming from somebody else. Brother Stephen. From, it's coming from bro Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother Stephen, if you believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can inspire you to goodness or to truth, yeah, fit right. You, be Islam. you believe this, right? Yeah, naturally. So why can't Allah not choose an individual to sh teach the people who c they can relate to, they have a language that they can understand, who can explain the things to them no properly? Problem. No problem. Why I can this not happen? I can accept that. So it can happen. But I accept it. Uh, for instance, you see, my aunt, I think there's this misconception. I believe fully in the Islamic concept that there are hundreds of thousands of prophets. Yes, thousands, hundred, over 120,000. Yes, so I believe there are not just this few lines of prophets in Judaism, but that Elaine, it's not a literal number. It means, it's a symbolic number, means anybody who sincerely seeks the truth can know the truth for natural okay. reason. So now you believe in a... Not now, we believed well, that before. Okay, but you, now you believe in a supreme creator. Now you're open to the possibility that God, if he chooses, he can have prophets. You accept that now, right? No, not, not in that sense, not in that sense. Let me hear what I say, Stephen. Yeah. If God chooses to, just as he chooses to inspire you or inspire people in their hearts, okay? If he wishes, he could send people who have the same language as the people yeah. they're, they're helping, they're guiding, who can take them out of darkness. Maybe they're worshiping idols and they can tell them, look, this is wrong. Worship only the Creator. And he can teach them how they should maybe wash themselves, clean themselves, pray to God Almighty, right? That is a possibility yeah, now, right? Yeah, but not right? in your sense. Not, not the definition of prophet you believe in. But because I don't believe that people who are, which I called wise teachers, I don't like to use the term prophets, they are sinless. Could they have been prophets? In, the sen in an Islamic sense? Yes. No. Why not? Why not? Huh? Why not? Because we can prove that all those so-called prophets, yes, of all the religions, if you look into their lives, and obviously depending on which kind of a definition of sin you use, yes, because sin, it's people have different concepts of what is a sin. For instance, so what proof, say, what, what proof do you have that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not a prophet of God? What's the evidence you can provide? Well, because I don't believe in prophethood. No, look, look. Prove me, to me, me, that, me that there must be prophethood in the sense. Okay, I, I, okay. You want me to? You want me to tell you what convinces me of the prophethood? Yes. No, no. On prophethood in general, the the way you understand it. Yes. Okay. That means a super that God chooses particular human beings. Yes. And communicates a message to them. Yes. Where's the evidence from that? Okay. For that outside the Quran. Excellent. Very outside very, the Quran. Uh, ex well, first of all, <laughs> no, no. But first of all, no, no. I think it's wrong, Stephen, for you to say that you can't use this evidence, but use some other evidence. That's not fair. Why not? Well, because, because if you say you're not permitted to use this evidence, which you in your heart know is the strongest evidence that the Muslim has in support of the prophethood. I think that's unreasonable because especially because we're not just talking about hearsay. 
we're not just talking about a book that mentions Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Mm. We're talking about something that we can establish through aql, through reason. That it couldn't have been any other way. That this book could not have originated from a human being. That, that this book is provably, uh, this book is provably uh, uh, preserved. That this book has prophecy in it, which has come true. Which this book has made many claims, none of which have been that, that have failed. There so, for, so for so for you to you then know. say no, but then for you to say you can't use this evidence, I think that's unfair. That's the you first. Know, there's thing. An now, excellent book. if can you I say, if, say can, I, can I intervene here? There's an excellent book by Ahmed Hassan. I studied at the Isla International Islamic University of of Islamabad in the eighties, late eighties, and he was uh, a professor. Also, Fik is his book. And it is interesting, this is the only book in a chapter he goes into the satanic verses and what the classical scholar says. Now why mention this? Because I believe there is the whisperer and the whisperer who is up there or whatever, he can also communicate to human beings. And so there can be wahi from shaitan, I believe, so okay. to speak, to use okay. to use Islamic uh, okay. terminology. Yes. Well, well, because look. you said you want to prove to me that this is a supernatural origin. Yeah, maybe. But from where? Okay, that's very good. That's very good. So now you're there is this guy so, called Iblis. So now you're making a claim. That the Quran no, is no, 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 a rhetorical statement. Well, do you believe the Quran is supernatural or not? No. Okay, so then let's not even go there then. But let's, it contains then, supernatural. Then it's, it a, con then it's a red herring. No, no. It, sorry, I said the Quran. When I said I, I agree certain statements in the Quran in the Hadith or in the Islamic faith, I acknowledge that the Quran contains eternal truth. Yes. Right. La ilaha illallah. And there will be a judgment and so forth. Many so do you believe? that Satan has influenced the Quran is that what you're saying hmm? do you believe Satan has influenced no, I personally it? don't believe that then, wh then why are you bringing up red herrings in this no, conversation no, no, it's not a red herring. It is. Said, well if you don't believe something or accept something why why even bring up that my point because that could be a that because Stephen, that's not my argument Stephen my point to you my, is that's not my Stephen, argument I, I, I argue Stephen Stephen my point to you for is, the non supernaturalists of the Quran yes but some people the Christian maybe would argue that or the Jewish uh, maybe argue well, it's, it's irrelevant what other people might argue. Yeah, I, I'm, talking to, I'm talking to you, aren't I, Steve? I could use that argument. Well, you could, but you'd, you'd fail because the very the, the, the whole concept of satanic ver verses is, is ludicrous. Because when you look at the context of the verses before and after, it wouldn't even make sense to have those verses in there. It doesn't even, the, the language doesn't even flow. You so it, so, it, so, it, so, okay. so it doesn't make it doesn't even make now, sense okay, to no, even if a per, even if a person doesn't believe in the Quran no, and they I don't see. believe in any of this. If you actually study this subject, you realize that it's nonsense. All right, now I'm listening to but you. But my point you is, you wanted to show me my, my, the, the, the prophet. Okay, so, yes, exactly. The so if, so, e so e e e even yeah. if you said to me that okay, you've mentioned all these miraculous claims about the Quran. But I don't want to uh, just the Quran. I want something else. Out of the Quran. Then I would say to you that there are thousands of eyewitness testimony of what of the of the miracles that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed. Thousands of them. Now I need to bring the concept now, of the ulama again. Now the point that regarding that, how many, that, which kind but, of but uh, look, uh, prof, uh, miracles the prophet committed. I mean they are divided. Some say the only miracle he did is the split of the moon. That's and not the true. Others, they say the only miracle the prophets brought or did is the Quran. That's not true. Any other miracle? Stephen, look, we're going to run around in circles and we take the take the topic to like all these different places. My point to you is a very simple point to you. Okay. You said it, my point. My, 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 that, my point you to said. you is a very simple one. The witnesses, and it's a reasonable one. The witnesses. So, so, so said. just hang in yeah. there. The way that we understand and know history is by testimony. The yeah. only reason I accept Christopher Columbus existed. It's not, yes. The only reason I accept Christopher Columbus existed is because there seems to be enough testimony 
throughout the ages yeah. that convinces me that the guy probably existed. Yeah. Now, whether some people say he did discover America, some people say that he didn't, whatever the situation. Yeah. But there is this story about him possibly discovering America. Why do I accept it? Because there seems to be a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know, testimony throughout history. Okay. And this is our general principle of belief on all matters. Yeah, mutawatir. Right, mutawatir, right? Yeah. So if we have enough testimony, especially if it comes from multiple sources, yeah. especially if that multiple sources ends up in multiple locations, and especially when those multiple locations sometimes are separated by multiple centuries, and then when it's catalogued, that the, that the wording is almost identical for the incidents that are being quoted, then we have a reasonable uh, approach to say that there's probably a lot more evidence to accept it than to deny it, right? Probably. Right. So we, we use our rationale, our aql, uh -huh. and when we put all of these things together, the miraculous nature of the Quran, the thousands of testimonies of the companions, yeah. When we look at the aspects of preservation of the Quran and how it has been memorized by millions of people, when we look at the teachings of the Prophet and how they do not correspond to the knowledge of a 7th century goat herder, when we put all, marry all this evidence together, we are then convinced that this is not just some random book, some random story this is not just some random man who makes some claims this is indeed something far greater than any of that and so if you will use our akal like you're saying then we come to a reasonable conclusion that indeed this man was the prophet of allah and indeed the revelation that he brought could have only come from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but according to islam we yeah. have no, no no not just according to islam there are people who have uh, who were Christian even yeah who studied certain aspects of the Quran yeah okay and they accepted that this is not the work of Muhammad or this is not the work of any man oh yeah many people yeah okay? I, I just remember which is so ah uh, yeah for instance those 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 person really those fake arguments from a guy like Yusuf Estes, for instance. No, 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 I'm not looking. Yusuf Estes, for look, look, let's not, let's I'm not. I'm just making the point here. This is, I noticed one thing. And I need to include myself to a certain degree in that as well. There's no Muslim who studied all the sources of Islam in depth. A lot of Muslims have misconception about the sources of Christianity and Judaism and many Christians and Muslims, uh, Jews, have completely misunderstanding of the sources of Islam. I noticed this because I do comparative studies and I noticed, obviously my knowledge is still little compared, to, you know, when you do comparative studies, you cannot really specialize in. You studied a little I, bit there, I, I, there, there. I think you've studied enough to know the truth. But the point is this, I do not believe that there were any Nabis and I don't, the documents you're referring to, for instance, you know, the Ahadi and all this. Even Sheikh Albani acknowledged, and he's certainly not for me a reference guide for Ahadi studies, there could be in the future a Mutawati Hadith to be turning out to be false. That is possible. Look, let me explain something to you. What I'm Stephen. trying to say is that the more we study, the more Stephen. we learn. Stephen. You understand? Do you know the term hyper skepticism? Yes, it's a philosophical concept. Yes. When we are hyper skeptic about matters, yeah. it doesn't matter how certain those matters are. The hyper skeptic will still find some reason to deny yeah, he, it. He doesn't want to believe. Right. But he, I want to believe in he, Allah. He, he doesn't Allah. want to believe. That's right. It's his choice. So when you make. I mean, a, you don't take those people seriously. When you make a comment to me hmm. and you say, I do not accept that there were any prophets. Yeah. Now you are making a statement, I would humbly say, which is despite your knowledge. I think completely erroneous and, 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 and uh, without knowledge. A very little knowledge, that's true. Because how, how would we know 
a person who claims to be a prophet, how would we know this person? Today, I would say this, if he claims to be, he is the supreme. Now, first of all, I believe that the enemy of God, commonly known as Iblis or Shaitan, I believe they also can, prov they can also, let me say this, or let me put this this way. A con man can create fake miracles, I believe. Yes, that's true. And uh, a person who is deceived can think that's a real miracle. Yes. I just recently learned. Yes. I saw an old picture in India how a fakir was uh, basically in the air. And by seeing those constructors on Trafalgar Square, where those people basically seem to be sitting in Floating. the air without support. And when I look at this picture again, I realized they did it very cleverly, covering, and he was like, like, like this sort of. And they covered all this clothes and all covered, you know? And I realized this guy is fake. Because I studied yoga and in the beginning I was impressed. <coughs> this yoga miracle. So there can be fake miracles. Yes, there can be. But, my but there can be also but, true miracles. Right, but my point, my point to you was that it's not just it's not just the miracles, is it? It's a whole. It's a whole. The miracle actually. It's, 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 it's how a, do you know it is a prophet? Yeah, miracle okay. is one. Second thing is miracles, right? The conduct is the, another. The thing. conduct is another thing, right? Uh, if somebody says uh, I'm a prophet of the all merciful, all righteous, all just, all compassion, and he displays. Uh, because I don't believe in the sinlessness of prophets. For me, it's okay if they have incident of uh, non-compassion or if they do evil Sorry, deeds. Sorry, the table because we leave it. Yeah, of course. Mis mistake. So, so, but for you, obviously, you believe in the perfectionness of the in the masoom and in the in no, the no, sinlessness. So, so, so my co my question to you, Stephen, is this: conduct. We why said. why did the people believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a prophet? Why did his enemies believe that he was a prophet and not, some of them not accept Islam? Why? What was the reason? The power. No. Yes, I believe. No. Uh, where's the I, I tell you what I believe. No, no, but it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't yeah. matter what I believe. It matters what they believed. Yeah, but I believe I'm, that's a fact. I'm asking you what they believe, not what you believe. Huh? I'm asking you why did they believe that he was a prophet? Well, let me answer this. It is recorded that they, that they allegedly, allegedly said and believed, allegedly. Yes. That they really believe, we don't know because we have not been around at the time. But, but Stephen, remember I told you about hyper-skepticism? Yeah. When we have tens of thousands of people and thousands of those people are saying that we believed in the Prophet of Allah, him and as a, as a messenger of Allah, I'm asking you what was the reason they gave? Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you know the reason? Do you know the reason? I'm asking, look, you might not huh? know, it's fine if you don't know why they accepted it. Well, one reason was al Amin. The trustworthy. It was, that was one reason, yes. They never knew that he ever lied. But there was actually a much more fundamental, much more important uh, reason for most of them. Uh, what do you, what, tell me which particular I'll, incident I'll you're I'll, referring I'll to. I'll tell you. Because I'll, I'm coming, different things come I'll, to my I'll, mind. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. There are many different reasons, when, really. There are many different yeah. reasons. But well, I'm that, not sure which one what, you're referring to. I'm referring to the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle of Prophet Muhammad's peace upon him <coughs> the Quran. was what Allah gave him the Quran. Yeah. And when he recited those words yeah. of the Quran, it touched their heart. The pe no, not just touched their heart. And their minds. They knew these were not the words of any man. Yeah. They knew that these were not the words of the, any jinn, any spirit. Because, ah, and, I'll, yeah. and I'll explain to you yeah. why they believed that. When the Quran was revealed, this is one of the other miracles of the Quran. Yeah. When the Quran was revealed, the eloquence of the Quran and the structure of the Quran. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier on. Was something that the Arabs had never experienced. Yeah, you mentioned it early on in right. describing the different morphology no, 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 and all this. No, no, kind of no, 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 no. But listen. So when they heard the Quran being recited by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. they realized that these are not the words of Muhammad. 
Sallallahu yeah. These are not these are not the words of any poet or any man that we know. This is something that is supernatural. This is outside the realm of what we would naturally expect somebody to come up with. Now, Stephen, listen to this very carefully. Yeah. The interesting thing is that Allah says this in the Quran. Yeah. To those pagans, to those people, if right? If you're truthful, produce one ayah like this. Well, first it says, first it says, yeah. produce a Quran like this. Yeah. Yes. I know. Then it says, produce but ten chapters yeah. like it. Then it then this then it, yeah. then it less lessens it. Yeah. And it says, produce but one chapter like it. And you know the smallest chapter in the Quran is three short verses. Yeah. Just, just, just. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna atayna kal kawthar, fasali li Rabbi ka wanhar. Inna shaniya kahul abtar. That is the shortest chapter in the Quran. Mm. And the Quran, Allah says in the Quran. That's a surah. Yeah, the short, that's the shortest no, no. chapters. That, he that, said ayat. Uh, I think the wording is ayat, or yeah. ayat. Ayat is a sign. But, yeah, no, they, no, the, but the, the, the short, the the, the surah is comprised bring, of different ayats. Yes, that's right. So, what is the shortest ayat bring, in your opinion in the Quran? No, it's, it's, it's bring one chapter like it. That's the shortest. Oh, okay. Now, now the point is this: those Arabs at that time, mm -hmm. they knew that this challenge was something they could not do because they knew the language, they knew classical Arabic. And so they sent their poets to find out mm. where is Muhammad getting his words from, mm. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So their best poet, I think Mughira, was it Mughira, if I'm not mistaken, he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu yeah. Alaihi Wasallam. And he says to the people, the pagans, give me some time to think about this. Yeah. The only thing he could say is that this, these words are magic. This is something. This is, a this is something yeah. outside of the outside of the capability, the capacity of any human being. This language is like this. Yeah. Now, for a non-Arab speaker, I think maybe you might because you've studied more than me. No, you, I don't you, say maybe that. Maybe you might be able to even decipher some of the Arabic. Yeah, well, obviously some now, of the Quranic look, verses. Look, look how beautiful this claim is. Even today, Obviously, me. it's a very melodic. Well, even today, mm. me as a non-Arab speaker. Yeah. When I hear the Quran, or I hear a classical Arabic poetry, or somebody speaking Arabic, or the Prophet peace be upon him's own words in Arabic, mm. I can differentiate the two. Yeah. The Quran sounds unique. It sounds different. Yeah, it well, it has to do with also with the recitation. Now tell the way me. You recite this, now you know? tell me. A man who was no. I find it also very beautiful. I right. Tell you. A man, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mm. who was known to be illiterate, could not read or write. Yeah, according to Islamic sources. Even if he could read or write, it's still it's still a miracle. Nevertheless. No. Of course it is. No. I tell you why it is. I tell you why it is. Because if today mm. somebody came to you with a book in English, and they said, as the author said, I challenge you. <laughs> None of you can come up with a book like this or even a chapter like this and it's only three lines is a chapter. You know and I know. It is inconceivable. You know, that, I'm not that, sure that if you have... even the day or the week would end without there be ten chapters that would defeat that, that challenge. But the pagan Arabs they tried and they tried until they realized that the only thing we can attribute to this is sorcery. But we cannot attribute this to the words of Muhammad because it, Muhammad could not do this. We can't do this. 20 years ago, there used to be, when I used to be here as well and interacting a little bit, but not as a former teacher like Joseph Smith and so forth, but just uh, listening uh, to the uh, arguments. J J J so Smith, anyway, J Smith is there not used a teacher. To be, they published a book, it was called The True for Khan. Yes. Written by an Arabic Christian. Yes. In poetic language, yes, and uh, you didn't give me the chance earlier on. The Arab language, the biggest contribution was by Arab Christians. That's okay. a historical fact. We're, we're moving the goalposts again. No, no, because you're talking about here. Listen, we're moving the goalposts again. I said he was either a Jewish, Look, if a you, Jewish if, reformer, if, if or a if Christian you, brother, reformer. If you truly use your akal. Uh -huh. 
okay, and you are a reasonable man, yeah, and you use your faculties reasonably, yeah, without being to Islam. without no 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 <laughs> without being Definitely. ultra skepticism. I am not okay. Then when you look at the Quran and you look at the different facets of evidence that support its divinity. I believe that an honest man can only come to one conclusion. Well, an honest man <coughs> to do but, that can only come to the conclusion if he knows but the Arabic it, original. But if, a, but if a person, yeah, I don't know Arabic. If a person wants to simply deny all of the evidence mm -hmm. that comes together and still makes excuses not to accept it, then you know it's up to him. But he's not using his akal and he's not being reasonable. Because when we when we apply evidence to any matter, you know, one piece of evidence, two piece of evidence. Yeah. Okay, when we apply 10, 15, 20, and we, we each one, it's an, a, an amazing and awe-inspiring, you know, collection. Then we have to ask ourselves: Am I being honest to myself here? But as a non-Arabic <laughs> reader and speaker. I need to rely on other people who are more qualified than me. And among those people, there are Muslims and there are non-Muslims. A real scholar is somebody, that's the reason I don't call myself a scholar in anything, but a real scholar who is a specialist in any given field. There are linguistics. So there are linguistics, there are specialists in Arabic language, in the Muslim, and in a non-Muslim field. So the only thing I can do as a lay person who doesn't, who doesn't, uh, you know, can read and do, doesn't have the knowledge of that level. Yes. I can only listen in to those arguments. Yes. And I come to the conclusion that the arguments of the non-Muslims are stronger than the Muslims okay. as regards that the Quran is so unique yes. in the Arabic structure yes. that it must be of supernatural origin. Yes. So I side with them. Okay. So can you tell me what their reasons are as to why they've made that claim and who the, who has made that claim? Christians, what? atheists, yeah. Jewish people. One scholar. Give me one. Give me. Give me one scholar uh, that has said that this is nothing special. And in fact, there are many books in Arabic that are far better. And these are the reasons that I'm giving. It's called. His name is Stefan. Yeah. Wild. Stefan Wild. He's a German scholar. Yes. Of the Arabic language. Yes. A professor. Yes. And his most famous book is called the Quran. Yes. Als text. The Quran as text. As text. Okay. And, and, what, it's, it's, and what does he say? This is nothing unique. Not not special. No, nothing special. Here. No. Okay. He believes that. Okay. That, I mean, this is a summary. I mean, yes. basically, yes. You, you, I don't want to misquote him. I've studied his book for a while. Yes. But you said one scholar. The others. Uh, uh, Richard Donner yeah. in America, for oh, instance. Oh, Donner. Okay, Donner. Yes. Okay. Uh, so why? No, no, so, so, Donner is a so, professor. So why do you believe them? Why yeah? do you believe what they have to say, and you don't believe the ones that actually? Say? So for why? Instance, do, I why do you? To why do you not believe? I, I listen. To, I listen to. Do, have you heard of Angelica Neuwirth, the, the, the foremost expert on uh, on the Quran in Germany? Have yeah, you, I know her. Have you heard her? I know her personally. Okay, lovely. But the thing is, what does she say about the Quran? Hmm? What does she say about the Quran? She's the Quran. Her personal belief. Yes. Yeah, and we can maybe we can set up a meeting and then we call her or write it'd be, her. It'd be lovely to speak to her. Yes. She believes that the Quran <coughs> is not of divine origin. No, she. Look, of course she doesn't. <laughs> Otherwise, she'd be Muslim. That's not why I asked you. Yeah. She. She's a scholar. She has made. She has the Quranic concept. Yeah. She has made. Uh, sorry, the Quranic uh, text. Uh, so, so her, so her statement. But I know the history because. Okay, but brother, you asked one second. You, you've yeah. spoken for quite a while. Angelica, what did she say? She says the argument for preservation is over because the weight of the evidence with the, the more manuscripts that we find of the older of antiquity, right, from the 7th, 8th, 9th centuries, rather than contradict the claim of the Muslims that they have been corrupted, right, oh, sorry, preserved, they actually confirm that they have been preserved. You and the Quran is, oh, one second, yeah. then what does she also say about the words? Are these the words of Muhammad? Are these the words that are unique to Muhammad? She says that the, 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 the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Quran are distinct. I agree. She doesn't believe that the Quran is a divine book because if she believed it was a divine book, she would be Muslim.
if she accepted that. You know, I spoke for but the, but, the, but the point that I'm trying to make to you is that you're not an Arab. No. And I'm not an Arab. Mm. That is one argument out of many other yeah. arguments. You have to, and similarly I have to, re, uh, refer to an academic and trust what they're telling me. But there are many other evidences that you yeah, can look at that where you don't have to have Arabic. For instance, I, I, I want to be acknowledging that I studied also with another scholar, also not very long, but with Professor Azami. Professor Azami was a famous scholar. In uh, he was. How can you study with so many people and still remain ag 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 anyway, agnostic? On many everything? many years ago, he wrote he wrote the best book you can find if you can find it, the Quran as text. You know, and he was quoting one famous scholar, which I also had the chance to speak to, which was Professor Hamdila from France. Also, they're both Indian from the Indian subcontinent. And they were both quoting the German research because the Germans were very advanced. They're going to all these different countries and taking the manuscripts and so forth. And they did something, but the research stopped for a while because of the Second World War. And this Mrs. Professor Neuwirth, she took up this, this research. So there are the Muslim scholars and it could take the other scholars out there in India and so forth who are specialized in Quranic studies real specialist uh, but I listen to German scholars French and I in my through my non-infallible uncle I came to the conclusion that the Quranic text in the original one is not supernatural it is of super it is of higher quality than the uh, poetry at that time. I agree with that. Yes. I so, so, that. Let me, so let me but ask I'm you. Telling, so, telling you my so, sincere belief. So, so, so you see that the point is this. But you, for you, me you, that could be human. Okay. So, so, so. Whoever, whoever okay, hold on. It, it okay. must be a brilliant person. <clears throat> Fine. A genius. Okay. I so, acknowledge so, that. So when the Quran makes prophecies. Yeah. About things to happen. Yeah. And they do happen. Yeah. Even though they're incredibly counterintuitive. Yeah. And could have failed through many multiple of reasons. Yeah. How were those claims made? How? How do you make prophecies that come true? That are counterintuitive? In other words, you expect something not to happen, but the Quran says that is what will happen. And it does happen. How do you make this claim? Tell me. The, uh, uh, this particular ayats, they were written after the event. Ah, now, now you now you have a problem. You know why you have that's, a problem? That's one argument. N now you have a problem. Yeah. Because we have a wealth of evidence. Yeah. To support the opposite view to that, a wealth of the evidence. Thing is this, we, we're talking here in front of the camera, and we're talking. No, no, no. I can I say this? We we are not actually. Having the documents in front of Look, you, I can. You can tell we, me everything. We don't I need can... them. I tell you why we don't need them. Mm. I'll give you. A... Now this is the akal coming in again. Yeah. Because we memorize if, the if, documents. If something is corrupted in the seventh century. Yeah. And there are multiple corruptions. Yeah. Can you ever end up with a unified reading globally without communication? Yes. If you burn all the four things and then and then create a new text. How can, now let me explain something. As Omar did. Now let me explain something. Omar did not do that, Uthman did. Sorry. Let me explain that to you again. Mm. I don't think you understood what I said. The Quran disseminated even before Uthman uh, burnt the, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, 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 the variants or whatever. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So the Quran had already spread. Yes. Into territories and areas. Yes. Tashkent, where, Egypt. Where people were already reciting. Yeah. And memorizing. Yeah. And passing on. Yeah. How do you then end up with one unified reading 14 centuries later? Where's this unified reading? Where you don't have fast communication. 95% of the world reads Hafs al Asim. Okay? Some of the other Warsh and what have you yes. are, are very rare. 
the, the, bulk, the bulk the bulk of it is Haftal Asif. Introduction right? to Hadi to the Quran. Brother, brother. Now science. Why can, So when uh, when we use akal, we have to admit that corruption over time, if anything, becomes worse. It doesn't become better because that's the very nature of corruption. And when you have multiple corruptions happening, then the truth is lost. May you can, you can, you can never yeah. end up with one reading. Yeah. That is why you don't have one reading of the Bible today. Uh, yeah, can I, you know, by the way, can I say something right? here to you guys? You have multiple readings. It was me 20 years, oh no, no, sorry, 20 years ago, when Joseph Smith was standing on the ladder there, and he was speaking to Abdul Yassin over there, look at all the different Qurans. Uh, sorry, well, look at all the different Bibles he's saying. Then I picked up my five Qurans and said, look at all the different Qurans. The point is this, I've not studied this new material about the variation. It's nonsense. I have, sorry, uh, but I'm... Uh, it's nonsense. You I'm know, telling you it's nonsense. Before, before Joseph Smith, yeah. I, were, I was aware of the different variation, but okay. I'm not a scholar, let me, okay? Let me, let me explain. But I believe that the variation, my... Uh, would be similar than uh, in the New Testament. Okay, you're completely wrong. And I'll tell you why you're wrong. I need to study this I'll tell, I'll tell you why. Yeah. No, you don't even need to study it. Just use your akal. I'm telling you, I'm giving you an argument. Yeah. If what, they te what they're telling you is true, that there are 32 different Qur'ans, yes? Where are these Qur'ans being recited? In different parts of the world. No, they're not. This is the problem that you have. You go to Iraq and the Imam is reading the Qur'an and he makes a mistake, the, the little boy from Afghanistan will correct him. If the little boy in Afghanistan is reading the Quran, a little boy from America will correct him, completely by memory. You cannot get that level of precision. No, just a you moment can, here. You can, look, you said you go by experts. By people and, of those who know better than Angelica Neweth. Knows more about the Quran than me. She knows more about the Quran than you. Yeah. Does she say the Quran is preserved? She does? Yeah, to a certain degree. No, yes. not to a certain degree. She says, far from the manuscripts that we're finding, going against the Muslim narrative of preservation, if anything, they strengthen it. And her argument is that this, this argument is finished. There is no argument left for this. Now I Angelica ask now, Neuvet now, gets now, money Stephen, from UAE and Steve, from Saudi Arabia. Oh please, Stephen! This is she gets money. Stephen, she's kissing certain parts. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. Yes, Stephen. she does. This is ultra skepticism. This is ultra. No, no, in my This opinion. is somebody who doesn't want to believe, no matter what. You know, but I know. Things. No, no, no. This, this is something you I'm want. From that part of the world. This is something that you now don't want to believe. Okay, and as a consequence, you will look for any excuse to wriggle no, no, out I, of I it. I just admitted that I've not studied the variation of the Quran look, compared to the variation there of is, the New there Testament. Is, the problem that you and have, by the way, I'm not a Christian or okay, It doesn't matter, but the problem that you have here yeah. is that when you have a particular cause of corruption, you have to see a certain effect of that corruption. Yes. If the effect is not there, that cause could not have happened. That's the point. That's the logic. Except if so there if, was a if, previous intervention, so if, so if, as Uthman right, burning but everything. If you, but if you say there's a previous intervention, yeah. was Uthman not a Hufaz, a memorizer? Yeah. Was not Abu Bakr radiallahu yeah, anhu many, Hufaz? Yes, wasn't, uh, yes. Uh, uh, wasn't, yes, I know, there were right? thousands. Thousands of Hufaz. Yes. Where is history telling us that, oh, uh, we've lost the Quran because Uthman burnt the Quran. Nobody says this. No, no, I don't believe that. I'm just speaking about the variation. The, po the, the point is that the, the, po the, 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 point, the point is that Uthman decided to standardize the Quran. Mm -hmm. Those variations were not standardized as a consequence. So, for example, when the Prophet was being given Wahi, mm -hmm. there were other dialects where they used a different word to mean the same thing. Yeah. So the Prophet Sallallahu said and recited to me another way until J Gabriel recited it in seven ways, seven modes. Yes, I know. And so those tribes could find the Quran accessible. Yeah. When now Quran had spread outside of Arabia, Uthman anhu, realized that there was not a need for those variants anymore. Yeah. Because uh, now the people who are non-Arab are coming into Islam. So to save confusion, mm -hmm. he standardized it. This is the same Quran the Prophet ﷺ recited. And 
a logical man, a rational man, a, a, an honest, a reasonable man would say, if, they, if the Qur'ans, like these people bring up 5, 10, 32 versions, they say, J. Smith and Hatun, yeah. 32 versions. I don't know Hatun. Right, no, well, anyway, okay, if that were true, then we would have the same problem today that the Christians have. They don't know which Bible to follow. Some Bibles have verses missing. Some Bibles have can more chapters. Can more I say chapters, something here? And then, right? Can we, I, I, we don't, listen, we yeah. don't have this issue. Yeah. Now, if we don't have this issue, there is only one reason why we could not have this issue. Can I say this? And that thing? reason has to be yeah. preservation. May I, uh, so, I, so now I'm asking you the question. If the Quran is preserved and it makes prophecies, and those prophets are counterintuitive and it doesn't make any mistakes. How can this be the work of any man? Tell me. I need to go shorter, please. And uh, Just answer I, this I last to, question yes, for I, me. I want to say this. Just, no, no, just answer, first, just answer this all, last question for if me. If a text is preserved, doesn't, it's for me no evidence of divine I'm not, I'm not, I'm not no, 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 no. But the question... The Guru Gan no, Sahib, no, for no, instance, no, 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 is no. preserved. Stephen, let's be fair here. Yes. I said that there were prophecies in the Quran. Yes. You try to negate those prophecies by saying that these were added afterwards. Yes. Uh, which means then after the event. Happened, right. Which yeah. means that it's not preserved. So then I brought in why it is preserved. Now, because I brought in it's preserved, you have to take those prophecies seriously. You can't ignore that now. That's the moment. That's the point. I'm not saying that just because something is preserved, it's from God. What I'm saying is that if it makes very bold claims and it makes prophecies and it has guidance that you could say that this could not have come from a man in the desert in the seventh century, you can't now say it was added later because you have preservation. So, I believe. So now you yeah, have. So, can so, so, no, 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 no. So now tell yeah. me if there are, if there are prophecies, to, no. how, how could they have come true without uh, it being from I God? I believe, to the best of my knowledge, there is no Quranic text existing today, uh, a complete Quran before the seventh century. That's not true. That's what I believe. Or, uh, se as in, se you mean sorry? When you say seventh century, well, I would accept that. Huh? I would accept that. So eight, in, sorry, in, in eighth, the, eighth century. You mean the eighth, eighth century? Yeah. Yeah. My okay. apologies. Who, who who was the first person to compile the Quran? Putman. No. No, no. Are we, are we talking about the? Uh, um, who was the, who, who was the first person to compile the Quran? What do you mean by compiling? To bring it into one binding, one book, because we had written text and we had memorizers, but who brought it into one book? You mean the ancient manuscripts, or you mean the printed press? The, the first Quran, the written Quran, with the parchments the, and the leathers, the parchment into one binding, one book. Who was the first person to do this? It was authorized by Uthman. No. 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 Give, me a, give, me, give me a hint. The, the Male or female? After the Battle of Yamama, yeah. which was in the second year, first year, second year, after the Prophet peace when he passed away, many Hufas, some say up to 80 Hufas, were shaheed, they were killed. That's right. Right. So, it was Umar Khattab anhu who came to Abu Bakr and said, we need to compile the Quran. I know that people wrote down oh, things. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Wait, listen. Yeah. Look, Stephen, you don't know, so I'm telling you. Yeah. So, by, by year two, we already have Abu Bakr anhu who compiled one Quran, which upon his death, Umar Khattab anhu got. Yeah, where's this the second, today? The second Khalif. Hold on a second. Yeah. Upon his death, he was given to his daughter Hafsa. Radiyallahu anha. Yeah, Hafsa. Yes. I just mentioned her, yeah. When Uthman wrote the skeletal text of the Quran through the witnesses, the memorizers yeah. and the written text. Yes. When it was completed by the whole committee, he got the Quran from Hafsa and they were identical, just to make sure that there were no problems here. Yeah. This is the same Quran that we recite today. Now, how can I say this? I disagree. Okay, no, but listen. Look, you disagreeing. Well, it's certainly not in existence today. You disagree. None but, of the manuscripts in but, existence. But this is the miracle of the Quran. Yeah. The miracle of the Quran is there is no book in human history 
like the Quran that has been memorized by millions of people. No book in all history. Now for an honest man, even this would be a sign. The Bhagavad Gita. Even this, no book. Gita. I challenge you. <laughs> millions, you say. I millions. challenge you, there is no book in all of human history. It's on camera. Uh -huh. That has been memorized to the letter, to the dot, to the pronunciation, like the Quran. Yeah, it's okay, but for no listen. That you know, doesn't prove anything uh, about the my brother. Yeah. Look. It doesn't prove your case. Listen, what it does prove is now we can show a mechanism how something could be preserved. Even today, did you know? When a Quran is printed, yeah. you know who they send it to to get it checked? To a Hafiz. To the Hafiz, to the yeah. Hafaz, to the memorizer. Yeah. Because that standard is the gold standard. Yeah. And I have witnessed with my own eye. Yeah. When you go to the prayer at night time in the month of Ramadan, if the Imam makes a mistake of even a, a vowel, even a letter, even a, a stretching of a letter, a pronunciation, He's corrected by the people behind. Mm. Nobody has the Quran open and they're not looking like this. Yeah. That level of precision, you do not find in any book anywhere in the world. I challenge yeah, I agree you. you. I agree with that, yes. Okay, I agree now, with that. now, isn't it amazing? It's amazing for you, That yes. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, yeah. and we have made it easy for you to remember. So this is not because the Muslims are clever. Mm -hmm. This is not because we are amazing. This is why we've... No. How many Hafiz are in the world? It is millions. Some mm -hmm. people say more than 11, 12. Some say up to 20, even 30 million. Mm -hmm. I have many in my family. Yeah. Mashallah. I, I have uh, my, pet, my father, re a few years ago, he went to uh, a dinner where they were celebrating a six-year-old. Yeah. Who had completed the whole Quran. Yeah, it's possible. Right? Now, my point to you is this. Preservation, my friend, is a done argument. It's, it's a, look, if you're going to argue the argument, then I'm sorry to say that it will be an argument from ignorance, not from facts. Mm. Okay? Now, I'm asking you the question, Stephen, yeah. that once you demonstrate preservation, if there you are... You take this miracle if, seriously. You have to then say, okay, Yes, I agree with you. Just because something is preserved, that's a very profound thing. Yeah. Doesn't automatically mean that it's divine. I accept that. Yeah. But then when it makes claims that no man could have known and that materialize, because you've proved preservation yeah. that somebody did not add this afterwards, yeah. then you have to say, you know, how did this happen? Okay. Can we stop now and give me, can you give me, give me one miracle and I'll come back to you on that. So one miracle I need if, to look if into. If you look into Surah Rome, the chapter Rome. Rome, yes. It talks about the Roman and the Persian empires. Yes, I know. The Persian empire defeated the Romans severely. Yeah. And it was commonly understood that they would get finished off because there yeah. were too few of them left. Yeah. The Quran made a pr prediction that the Romans within three to nine years will yeah, defeat first, yeah. defeat the Persians. I look into that. The people were saying that this is the, these yeah. people are nearly finished. Yeah. Now, how could that prophecy have failed? Yeah, you got a point. Many yeah. ways. They, they might never have fought again. Mm -hmm. Prophecy failed. The Persians actually could have finished the Romans off, which is what was believed to have going to happen. But prophecy failed. The Arabs had fought the Persians and they fought the Byzantians. The Arabs might have fought the Romans and defeated them. The prophecy failed. Mm -hmm. The Romans may have attacked the Muslims first and the Muslims could have defeated them. Prophecy failed. Yeah. So many ways the prophecy could have failed. So many. Now, a liar will not make this claim <laughs> because he knows he'll probably f make a mistake. And when you've proven preservation, my friend, and then you have the same. Let's assume from the, the preservation is true. Then, yes. Well, look, brother. Look, I'll be very. To, I'll be very honest with you. You need to. I have. Al that. I have. Alhamdulillah, studied this to some level. No, I would say yeah, scholarly did. level. Mm. And Alhamdulillah, I am convinced. 
it could not have been any other way. Because if there was not preservation, it would only be more and more corrupted over time, especially where you have remote Muslims living in remote parts of the world, mm. the corruption would have increased. You will never have agreement. Look, we, you know that even in Islam, we have sects. Yeah. Sometimes they don't agree. Yeah. Shia and Muslim, we don't, uh, Sunni, we have uh, disagreements, right? <laughs> Nobody disagrees about the Quran. <laughs> mm. Nobody, nobody says the There's Quran is corrupt. Shia. You have a very small, very, very, very skewed number. Yeah. But the, <clears throat> I'm talking about 99.9%. <coughs> yeah. Sorry. Nobody says that this Quran is corrupted. It's been changed. Yeah. Nobody even argues that point because it would be a futile point to argue. The, there's a prophecy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said that the barefooted goat herders, the Bedouin, will compete with one another to build lofty towers. Now, it's interesting mm. because the goat herding Bedouin was never expected to become the richest and the most uh, highest in Arabia yeah. because those were the noble people. Mm -hmm. So the people were shocked, like what the, these, these nomads, these uh, tent living uh, people, they're going to be competing with one another to build. Surprisingly, it is from those people that the rulership that we have today, yeah. and they are indeed competing. This was one of the signs of the last day. By the way, uh, you know, in this ancient time, you know, they, they were travelers from India, from China. But and my point to you is, brother, they, my, look, they my, had big my, towers my, built my, in I China. I understand. And in India. My, my, my point to you is, Buildings. Steve, my point to you, Stephen, is this. Yeah. If we are honest mm -hmm. and we look at it with an open mind and an open heart. Looking at the evidence, look that's at, important. Exactly. Go wherever the evidence takes you. Yes. Okay. And my advice. Not just believing. I agree. You need to. You know what you need to do is you need to point people to the evidence. I agree. To the documents. Look at. I that. agree. So once you once you establish preservation, mm -hmm. then you look at the the claims that is now. Isn't it interesting? In the Bible, it talks about the Pharaoh. Yeah. And it talks about Pharaonic dynasty, Pharaonic dynasty, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, yeah. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Yes. The Quran specifically uses the word king when there was a king mm -hmm. and uses the word pharaoh when there was a pharaoh. Yeah. Nobody knew these things really. Yeah, it's not that's not supernatural. For it's me. not supernatural, but what I'm trying to say to you is where the There were smart people there. What I'm trying to explain to you mm -hmm. is that when knowledge is prevalent to be a certain thing mm -hmm. and somebody is going against that knowledge, then either they know something that they others don't know. So. Then you have to establish where they got the knowledge from. Yeah. Okay, that's the first thing. Secondly, the people are mocking them. They're, oh, look, they make a mistake here. They've made a mistake yeah. here. Yes. But later it's proven in the 18th century when the hieroglyphics are yeah. being looked at. Actually, this was a this was not a pharaonic dynasty. At this time, it was king. Mm. The Quran surprisingly gets it right. Mm. Now, the point here is this. Getting it right by itself, even though it's quite extraordinary when the knowledge is not prevalent, mm -hmm. by itself people can say, well, yeah, is that divine? Is that not divine? But if you make no mistakes yeah. and you get nothing wrong, then you have to ask the question, how does this man in a desert in the 7th century get things always right? He's not making all the errors that we find in the Bible, for example, or in, in the other scriptures. So all of these things, when we add them together, the, and, and the Quran says it very clearly, that if you're truthful, come up like a, like a book like this, come up like 10 chapters like it, come up with just one chapter like it. Now, just imagine this. Forget what the scholars are saying today, yeah. Muslim and non-Muslim scholars, mm -hmm. let's for argument's sake. At that time, if you heard the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, challenge this, and then you found 10 people that met the challenge, would you ever accept Islam? Would Islam ever grow? Would it ever take off? The people would have said you're a liar. Look, he's, his eloquence is far better than the Quran. His eloquence, his eloquence, this poet, that poet. They didn't say that. What did they say? They said this is not from any human being. 
this cannot be matched. They accepted it. Some of them died believing this without accepting Islam. But the point to you is this. Forget what the experts are saying now. Islam would have never taken hold. The people would have never accepted the Quran as a miracle because they spoke the language, they knew the language. And the people around the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they would have jumped on the chance because they were very eloquent. They were poets, they were the masters of that time of yeah. eloquence, yes? They would have jumped on him, defeated him, and the people would have left him. Because they would have said this man, is, he's lied. Because look, it's much better, much better, yeah. much better. But they didn't do that. In fact, they flocked to him mm. because they realized this is not the words of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This you cannot see, be the word. Because words. as I said before, that I don't believe in special wahi and I, therefore I don't believe in prophets. You believe? I don't believe in, in, in Judaism and Christianity. But my concept, I'm just going to make a point here. Uh, my argumentation, obviously, why I'm not accepting Islam, that was your initial question, is different. You know, if I would follow, uh, if I would following uh, like any, if I would believe in, in Wahi and also in Shaitan as an opponent, then probably the Shaitan argument would be the biggest argument for me. Strangely, my, my brother, the, the my Jewish brother. and the Christian, they don't use that argument. It surprises me. You said to me that you will go wherever the evidence takes you. I try, yeah. Right. At the moment, what you're telling me—I'm not me, infallible. At the moment, I could be deceived. At the moment, what you're telling me is—I can make an error. At the moment, what you're telling me is, it to me it feels this and it feels that, and I think this and I think that. That's not evidence-based. I'm giving you evidence. No, no, conclude. No, no, that's not evidence. But I'm giving you evidence. Quoting to, something is I'm, not evidence. I'm giving you. I only accept documented evidence. Listen, do you accept your father is your father? Mm -hmm. Do you accept your father is your father? I did after I did the DNA test. Did you accept your mother is your mother? Yes, I did after I take to the DNA did you, test. Do you accept that your grandparents are your grandparents? I did after I take a DNA test. So you took you took that DNA, did you? Yeah. Do you do you accept that your great grandfather and your great grandmother were your great grandfather and your great grandmother? I don't know them. Okay, but do you accept that they were th those were the people that you saw in your photos or whatever, or what your mum told you, or what your dad told you, or what your grandfather told you? I believe that I had some grand grandfather. We believe that's natural. It's common sense. We knowledge. we believe in things based upon balance of probability. Yeah, good. Right. What I'm telling you to do is look at what I have told you, be mm. honest to, to yourself. Ah, that's the problem. Why always bring this honesty? Be, uh, we have to be honest to ourselves because many of the things... I that, could just use this argument against yes, you. Yes, you, you could do. And if you said to me, be honest about... Uh, honest about, about this and this. Yes, then I would say to you that from a young age, I decided that either I would be able to establish evidentially yeah. and manifest that in the strongest way that this was from God yeah. or I would not be Muslim. I would not follow blindly. But you're from a Muslim family. I'm from a Muslim family, yeah. but in England, when you're born in this country, yeah. you know and I know I can be anything I want to be. I could be True. Muslim at home, I could be atheist outside, yeah. I could be Muslim at home, I could be agnostic. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So the point here is this. You feeling that you don't feel God would have prophets yeah. is irrelevant. You feeling that God doesn't send Wahid to certain people is irrelevant. Yeah. The only thing that's relevant is the is, evidence. Is the evidence. Yes. And when you inshallah look at the evidence with an open heart and an open mind, inshallah Allah will guide you to Islam. I look into this, promise you I would look into One the of the Roman things thing, I would say to you Stephen is this. Thing. One yeah. of the things I tell you Stephen is this, yes? When you but go when, when you go when you go when you go home today Stephen. Uh. Just put your head onto the ground and pray to that creator that you believe in and ask him to guide you, inshallah, with, with true sincerity. That if you're up there, I want to find you. Please guide me to the truth. And inshallah, if you are truly open hearted, open minded, mm. Allah will guide you, inshallah. The truth will make you free. But the truth will set you free, right? But what, all I will say, brother, is this ultra skepticism leads to no. I, no I come across like that, huh? I think the, po the point with you, Stephen, is that you want to deny it so much. I'm not a philosopher. I understand. But I'm you, not Steve. You want to deny it so much that you're trying to find any excuse not to 
And what I would say to you is, go by balance of probability. Well, you need to look at the different arguments. Of course I need to you do. To Dr. Azami, to Dr. This well, and this. I think, and I need to I, Dr. I, 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 think, I think some. I need to, I think some. To get Putin. I think. I think sometimes, Stephen, what can Stephen happen? Wald. I think sometimes, you know, what can Compare. happen? Yeah. Sometimes, Stephen, you know what can happen? As a lay person. You know, sometimes what can. But happen? I don't need that actually because I have to act. You know, sometimes what can happen mm. is if you listen to too many chiefs. You end up making no decision. <laughs> you see, but the problem is okay. this. As I showed you, there has to be, there yeah. has to be, there, there has to be certain things, for example, that are accessible to you or accessible to me. It's not the why. Listen to what I'm saying, yeah. brother. Look, there are certain evidences that are accessible to you or they're accessible to me. The Akal. I bought the book by Raymond Farin. I read yeah. it. I watched his lecture and I thought, wow. What is the name? Uh, what's the name Professor of the book? Raymond Farin. Uh, F-E-R-R-I-N F-A-R-R-I-N Farin Yeah, I think I saw him yeah? I need to look if I have that book Okay So In my archive when you, when you look at these things These are accessible for me and you Yeah Okay When, for example, if you go uh, on YouTube Watch some of the videos by, prof uh, by not Professor, sorry uh, Noman Ali Khan yeah, this famous uh, Pakistani oh, on, scholar on, on, the, on, on the miracles of the Quran, right? Yeah, of the, the, of, of, the, of the, scandal, of the, isn't it? Uh, well, look, it's irrelevant of yeah. uh, the one's personal thing. Yeah. Uh, if you want, if you, if you, but if you're going to look at like a conduct, do you look at the conduct of all the professors and possibly what they might have done or what they're doing? You look at their works, right? So I'm, I'm asking you yeah. to refer to his work, not go yeah. into somebody's personal life, what they do, what they don't, what they don't well, do. Well, from a religious point of view, I would be yeah. very careful. Uh, yeah, but I mean, not, no, no, but for but instance, the, uh, I know. She's a secularist. But, but the point that I'm trying to... But if I take from a... Okay. Somebody who says, I'm a strict that, Christian... That's fine. That's, that would have that, 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 that's fine, but he's not giving you necessarily... What he's giving you is an academic argument that you can look at, and he's giving you the grammatical issues, grammatical concepts within the Quran, which are of a miraculous nature. You can then go away and study those, and you can look at those. Mm. Anyway, it was a pleasure talking to you. What was your name? Abbas. Where's your family originally from? My family is originally from India. Wow. Yeah. My what are you by profession, if I may ask? Uh, uh, at the moment, I'm just driving. I do driving for, for no, a profession. Before. I've done lots of different businesses, but uh, you, uh, you I'm not, I've never been formally... Uh, you, you couldn't say that I had a formal career as such. I had several businesses. Did you went to university? Life. No. You know I, a lot of knowledge. Yeah, well, uh, you, you know... You studied I, a lot. I'm only a person with a very basic high school uh, education. But I the, can't believe but, that. But the, but no the way. True, that, that is true. But the, look, the point that Stephen, I'm trying to make to you is this, yes? Just look at it with an open heart and an open mind on balance of probability. Could Muhammad have come up with this Quran? Could he have made the prophecies that he did? In the hadith where he's made the prophecies, could he have really made those prophecies? You know, could he have really yeah. said that? Why did the Arabs accept that this Quran is miraculous? Why? Why did, why did millions of people accept it? that this was miraculous. Why did they not just say, what are you talking about? Well, the simple answer is, the simple answer is obviously for me, they were deceived. Well, look, if they were deceived, then you have to provide evidence of how they were deceived, why they were deceived, right? Just and, 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 were deceived. and the point is this, the point is this, Stephen, even today, mm. there are people who are giving lectures on the grammatical miracles of the Quran, the grammar of the Quran, the eloquence of the Quran, the, the imitability of the Quran, that it cannot be imitated. Why can it not be imitated? What are the reasons behind that? Can I, Even till today, people are giving those lectures. So this is not just something well, that was... Can I say this? One other yeah. thing is, interesting story. Obviously, you maybe don't accept it, but there was this guy, uh, this German guy, and he was studying yoga and all this Hindu New Age stuff. And why he claimed to... <laughs> one day he said, he's, he saw a light going into the Quranic book. He saw a light shining at the Quranic book and then he started to read and he became a Muslim. And today he is one of the senior armies of the Ahmadiyya in Germany. Okay, but then look, look. I'm just making the point is that uh, some look, people have different, uh, look, how they come to believe. I understand what you're saying, but I don't, I, look. A supernatural light, by the I, way. I understand what you're saying. Look, look, I understand what you're saying, but I, would rather go wherever the evidence takes me, okay? And I didn't see a light, I did not hear any voices, okay? I decided that I would look at the claims that my fellow Muslims are yeah. making. What are these claims? 
if and I'm being honest to you, if I found that those claims were false, that the Quran wasn't preserved, that there were lots of discrepancies, that there were lots of problems, then I probably would not be Muslim today. Because the, because the Quran says, Allah says, we shall guard it from corruption. When Allah says we shall guard it from corruption, and if there's lots of corruption in there, how can I now accept the text? I would never have accepted it. May I say this? So the point yeah. that I'm trying to make to you, brother, is this. That look, look at these things with an open heart and an open yeah. mind. And if on balance of probability, it's more likely that what I have told you is true, then accept it because you're already halfway there. But you can I say this before I go here? Is first of all, our conversation here was to a certain degree quite shallow. I wanted to check you out a little bit what you know and you probably wanted to know a little bit what I know. And obviously, real seekers, they need to go deep into the Dalia, deep. This is very shallow. I mean, we can, I can quote you this, 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 this. That, you know, if you don't know the text of Stefan Wilde, it brother, makes no sense, brother, for brother Stephen. I'm just saying. Let's say Stephen, or brother, I. You me, give me, a, you give me an argument. For the for instance, this for instance. Brother, Let's say I wouldn't yeah, know brother, him. Brother Stephen, look, the problem that you, you the, wouldn't believe. But the you don't expect me to believe you. The problem, just like the that. problem with diving sometimes too deep, is that you drown. Mm. Not if you have good lungs. The, if you go too deep, that's the key here. Not just deep. Mm. I'm saying if you go too deep, you drown, you suffocate. Not if you have protective gear, uh, uh, like a submarine. Even if you have a submarine, if you go too deep, the submarine implodes. No, it was it was this uh, film actor, the film director. What's his name? Cameron. Let, let's listen. He let's, went to the deepest spot with yes. the submarine. Yeah. Okay, but uh, listen. And he came up alive. Uh, how uh, the, the thing is this? Yes. You say the deepest spot. I think the deepest spot is something like known to humankind. Ten kilometers or yeah. 15 kilometers down or something. Yeah. Okay. Let's say if he went down a hundred kilometers, if there was a deep as an ocean, a hundred kilometers, then he would implode. It would be dead. Yeah, yes? that's true. Right. So my point to you is that. Yes, you have to go to a certain depth. Yeah, you can get confused. But we all have our capabilities. Yes. We have our limitations. That's right. If you dive too deep, you drown, you suffocate. What ends up happening? And this is what shaitan does. People lose their faith. Shaitan wants you to procrastinate. He wants you to hold you back as much as he can. Mm. Sometimes to a clever man, he tells him to keep going deeper and deeper and deeper, knowing that the, the journey will never end. And he will never give the testimony of faith. He will never accept Islam and he will die as a disbeliever. So this can be sometimes from shaitan. You know, Abbas, I've been... So I'm not saying that yeah. you should remain ignorant. I'm not saying that you should not learn, but learn enough to allow you to be convinced of the evidence. Mm. Once you've accepted the evidence, you take your testimony and then you continue learning. But you know, you realize that not everything, I didn't tell you everything I know. I know you, you look, I understand you've studied a lot so and no, a lot no, of no, people. And, and, and I'm, I'm also not a scholar, but what I'm trying to say is what I, the way I like to do it is like uh, <clears throat> Muhammad Hijab did. You know, you bring the books and then you have the sources here because here, 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 that's the way you do it, I believe. But look, Stephen, the this is quite shallow here, what people have. I usually I understand, but what I'm trying to come to, here, I'm just giving you these pointers and I, I you're going to go away. You're going to look at Surah Rome. OK, maybe I already did. OK, you're going to look at these things and then maybe next time I come down, inshallah, maybe you can come down. We can have a discussion. You must have studied something. I haven't. Alhamdulillah, no, I, I've, I've studied very little. No, no, but you really, you know, you, your English is quite good. Well, oh, I was born here. That's why it's oh, just okay. a, co it's a consequence of being no, here. No, no, honestly, can I say, because I've been, is this normal for you? You're, you're, you're quite uh, you quite mastered the English language. I've never well, come across. Uh, again, Honestly, my, have... my language skills are average and my knowledge of Islam is actually, I would say, very weak. But Alhamdulillah, I'm just learning. No, no, you know, you we, know, we're, 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 we're you learning. know quite a few apologetic I, I, arguments. I just know enough that Alhamdulillah that I've been convinced by. That's mm. what I would say. And, and Alhamdulillah, there is a, a, a wealth 
of information, of evidence and depth of Islam that, mashallah, many of the other brothers and sisters and many of the what scholars... What's your opinion, if somebody wants sincerely look a little bit at the evidence, what kind of web page would you recommend? What, what would I what recommend? Kind of web, web page. Where Web he page. can look at the uh, evidence or where, where, the, where the documents may be listed and then he can buy them. Do you uh, have any recommendations? So I would go to Sapiens Institute. Sapiens, Sapiens Institute. Institute. They do a lot of things. Aira.org. Sorry, if you can just. They are uh, Aira.org. Uh, uh, they have a lot of free literature, lots of free books, lots of free Qurans. So Aira.org. Aira just put it in your phone, I think. Maybe I don't have one with me. Uh, Who's okay. behind that there? Uh, brother, originally, uh, so okay, there's some uh, information on here as well. So, uh, is it so, Abdurrahim so, so, Green? So, so Abdurrahim Green. Oh, this is yeah. with this uh, yeah, so Al Hittin Institute. Uh, so, so, Sapiens Institute, uh, Sapiens and, and Aira. Uh, I would recommend going to them. They have, yeah. a, they have a lot of books. Mashallah, there's a lot of books about prophecies. There's a lot of book about the miracles of the Quran and what have you. So it'll give you mashallah and it's all free mashallah. They, I mean, I can tell you that compared to 26 years ago, and even those people here, those Christian and the Jewish, they acknowledge that Muslims, they smartened up now. They really get people educated the last 20 years. I mean, I know the old people like, uh, what's his name? Mansour was here 26 years ago. He's still ago. here, mashallah. He's a Hashim. amazing mashallah. And who is brothers. this Pakistani guy? <laughs> Uh, uh, what, he comes here? Yeah, his, his son is called Musa. Adnan Rashid. Yeah, Adnan, he Adnan was Rashid. here. Adnan Rashid. And then Abdurrahim Green. And there used to be a sheikh coming from UAE, a famous sheikh. I think there was somebody, somebody like that as well here. Yeah. But I, the way he, what he pointed out here, he disagreed with this kind of nasty language they sometimes use here. Yeah, this, I, don't agree uh, with, I don't agree with like that. Like Ali Dawood is joking around. Anyway, I, I, look, I don't want to give specific names. But all, all I'm saying to you, brother, but they, is that... they smarten up, really. All, all I'm saying... All, all I'm saying... In philosophy. Well, they... Logic. The, the, I'm impressed. The brothers are, mashallah, very well-read. I mean, it's well the young read. generation. They're educated The people. young generation, mashallah, they're really... And, and, and why I like Sapiens Institute very much is they're actually nurturing people yeah. uh, with a with a very high standard and a very high level of mashallah you know education. what i appreciate with islam like scholars like ibn tamir <coughs> I, I got everything in different languages of him in european language french english imam ghazali there's a very good book if you want to find arguments against the trinity imam ghazali wrote a book against the trinity yeah. very deep uh, obviously it applies to the current situation and it is time which is slightly different why don't you accept time. islam <laughs> Steve? i don't that. understand you're already you're much already halfway even, there even hasim you know? al-alusi my one of my favorite guys he said a very interesting thing he said if you desire a woman in al mullah he gives his fatwa you can go to a house and sneak on her while she's taking a shower. We, we would it not, was his opinion. Well, we stuck for Allah. We would never accept this. No, because Muhammad, Muhammad said, Sheikh well, Muhammad said, no, it is not. This was seriously his opinion. Well, it's not, opinion. it's not correct because the Quran says, tell the believing man to lower his gaze. But at that time they could practice that because they were in charge. The, the point is, the mm. Quran is our our our, our, our golden rule. But it's from Allah. Why I'm saying this? Because can I say this? A uh, very famous Roman Catholic scholar, Alphonse Alt Letugi, he's a doctor of the Roman Catholic Church. He said, he said something similar. He said, if you attract her to a woman to marry her once, you can imagine how it would be with her in bed. Okay, well, something uh, similar. Uh, any, anyway, what I'm trying to say totally is how advanced those people were. My. <laughs> For me, but I've never for, seen. For, for me, I've never seen. I've never seen the Islamic uh, Stephen, concept of. Where is this conversation going? I've never <laughs> seen. <laughs> I mean, where is this conversation going, really? The Indian Kama I mean, Sutra. Okay, the, the okay. Muslim Kama please, Sutra. Please, Stephen, Stephen, please. please, let's let's keep it civil. Let's keep it, mashallah, within the realms of, of yeah, decency. Yeah, but can I ask you something? Let's keep. Why it. did the Why is the Hadith says that Muhammad has the sexual power of forty men? Okay, I mean, why again, is that? Again, uh, Stephen, you're moving into territories. Quite frankly. First of all, I don't know what hadith you're quoting. Mm. Secondly, I don't even know whether it's daif hadith or this is fabricated. I don't know none of these things, right? So, quite frankly, I've never heard heard this hadith. But no, anyway, what I'm trying to say is here, but, but, but Stephen, I'm, I'm impressed with the Muslim Stephen, scholars, but all the classical. I, but all I'm and I noticed this year that the Muslim community today tries to get back to this level. 
yeah. anyway, products, you know, it's so, amazing. So hopefully you look into the things that I've Rome, said to you. Rome, only Rome I look into. Oh, look into that, inshallah. Look at the works of Professor Raymond Farin. Okay, and inshallah, you know, look at these things and then... Uh, By the way, is he still alive or is he... Raymond Farron is still alive, yes. Raymond Farron. What, do you know where he's based in which country? Uh, he is based in Kuwait. He teaches English at the Kuwaiti Univ American University in Kuwait, I think it is. When did you come across this book? Uh, is this a one particular uh, it's, book? It's about he, wrote he wrote it, ten, I think, nearly ten, eight, eight years ago. Or so. What was it about, roughly? It's the structural concepts of the, uh, of, of, of the Quran, basically. And he's a fluent Arabic... He speaks fluent Arabic and he learned classical Arabic. I will look it up. I appreciate this. Not a problem. Thank you for the advice, Abbas. Not a problem, Steve. But remember one thing, Stephen. Mm. There is no guarantee in life and in death. True. Today we're here. Tomorrow we might not be here. But I love death. We might not be here tonight. Okay. So what I would say to you, brother, is look at these things quickly, carefully. You're a very clever man, mashallah. No. And I think that if you were to see these evidences, I'm a skeptic. if you you are showing hyper skepticism, but I believe in but, la ilaha but, illallah. But but hopefully, inshallah, if you see this evidence on balance of probability, yeah. that you will accept it. And inshallah, Allah yeah. will guide you. You know this thing with Abdul Hamdan. Just uh, forgive me. It was a little bit like a I, I like, like joke. You know. I need to. I need to really is rush off. A, is this the new Swiss thing? It's, a, it's very old, actually. This is uh, no, no. Sorry. There's a, there's a blood three. pressure thing. Yeah, not this one. <laughs> this is not. The, this is this not the one with blood pressure. Have you been coming here, roughly? Yeah. Uh, uh, regularly since about 2013. No, I've not. I, I left the be way before that. Yeah. You're quite knowledgeable. Well, um, I wouldn't like, say I was. I've never but, seen uh, you on YouTube, actually. We have a channel called EF Dawa. EF Dawa. I EF Dawa. And we You're have, on there. Uh, oh, yeah, I think over a thousand videos on there. Not not mine, but uh, nice in total. You, nice to meet you too. Masalama. Masalama. Bye bye. All right. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. So uh, basically, we had a long discussion with uh, Stephen there. And the issue really is that um, we have this a lot of the times in the park where people show a level of hyper skepticism about the evidences for Islam and the evidences for the Quran. Now, if we were to use hyper skepticism, then we would believe in nothing in history. We wouldn't believe that man landed on the moon. We wouldn't believe in uh, many of the historical uh, aspects that we commonly believe and accept today. And we accept them and we believe in them because we have multiple uh, uh, viable testimonies to those things. And Alhamdulillah, we have multiple viable, provable testimonies, uh, in, ranging from thousands to tens of thousands of people uh, about the Islam, about about Islam, about the Quran, uh, and about these events that happened. So, Alhamdulillah, preservation is really a done deal, according to professors like uh, Professor like uh, Angelica Neuwith from Germany, that this the whole concept of preservation. It is, is a ridiculous argument because it's done. She says there's so much evidence, so many manuscripts that have been found that you cannot claim that the Quran is not preserved. So when we find prophecies, when we find unique things within the Quran that the other scriptures often get wrong, then we have to ask the question as reasonable people using a balance of probability, how could this have been known? How could this be recorded? How could it have been preserved over 14 centuries? And when we add all of these evidences together, Alhamdulillah, we realize that Islam is haq, it's the truth, and that the Quran is indeed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, inshallah, remember us all in your dua. Assalamu alaikum.